All right, so in section 7.6, again, we're going to be expanding these logarithms using properties, okay, properties of logarithms. So uh, let me write them down over here to the side. So properties of logarithms. Or properties of logs. Okay, so a first one here. If you have log base b of x to some power, now it doesn't have to be an x, it can be a number, okay, but something to some power, then you can get that power and bring it to the front. Okay, and then all you have is log base b of x. So it's like that power just kind of drops over, right? Like it just kind of falls to the front right there like that. Okay? So that's basically what the first um, property is. So if you notice, you have log of something to a power. You can bring the power forward. Okay? So an example of something like this, if I can, um, just something simple, let's say log base five of x cubed becomes three log base five of x. Okay, that's it. That, that's what the property looks like when you use it. Okay, just move it to the front. All right, second property. If you have log base B of things that are multiplying, so it can be an X times Y, it can be a two times X, okay? Uh, or a four Y or whatever, okay? But they're, they're two things that are considered a product. Then you can rewrite it, log base B of X plus log base B of Y. So it's like you separate them. Now, sometimes my students say, I have a hard time remembering. Well, always remember, guys, multiplication and addition are related, right? Multiplication is just adding, but in a faster method. Division is just subtraction. That's all it is. When someone says, what's 10 divided by 2, and you say 5, the reason why you say 5 is because if you get 10 and you, and you subtract 2, and do it again, and do it again, and do it again, you'll get to zero after five subtractions. So 10 minus two minus two minus two minus two minus two, that's zero. So you subtracted two five times. That's why 10 divided by two is five, because that's how many times it took you to subtract it to get to zero, okay? So division is subtraction. It's just a shortcut to it. Multiplication is addition. It's just a shortcut to it. So when you see this property, property number two, where you see that they were multiplying first and now we write them as a, su uh, as a sum or as an addition, it's because that's, that's the way they are. They're related, okay? So we're just gonna write them as two things added together. So if I were to give you like, say log base four of three X, then you would write log base four of three plus log base four of x. Because three times x, right? That's a product right there. So we just expand it to log base four of three plus log base four of x. Now another one is if we have a fraction. Now remember, Division is related to subtraction. Okay, division is related to subtraction. So I'm just going to write it log base b of x minus log base b of y. So just a tiny example. If we were to write log of, uh, let's say, 10 over z. Notice that's a log base 10, right? So that would be log of 10 minus log of z. Now I know log of 10 is one, that's a property that we learned before, uh, but I'm just gonna leave it alone, okay? For now, we're just gonna leave it log of 10 minus log of z.
It was for someone in your class. Okay, thank you. All right, so just uh, like I said, just an FYI real quick. Sorry, every time I pause it, I always have to like reduce and maximize again. A quick FYI. So if you're given the square root of something to a power with an index, you can rewrite it as x to the power over the index. All right, so those are all the things you guys are going to need to know, okay, uh, in order to do this thing. Now, I was looking at your homework, and I noticed that the odd questions were a little bit more involved than the even ones, so I'm going to do the odd ones with you guys, okay? Not because the, e the even ones are super easy, but I just think the odd ones give you more situations in which it allows us to use uh, our properties. Now, by the way, sometimes some of these properties might be used uh, uh, more than once. So maybe first you break them apart by addition and then you have to take a power down or something like that, okay? So it is possible to do multiple things like that. Now, again, since I did pause it, I have to do that just to get the paper to kind of activate again. So here we go. So we're doing question number one log of x squared. Now they just want me to expand that. Notice there's no multiplication, there's no division, there's no radical, right? It's just a power. Okay, so all you have to do is bring the power down, right? Just get this to bring it to the front, so that's 2 log of x. And that's your answer. So that's a pretty easy one, just so you know. It's pretty uh, straightforward. But it would be 2 log of x. So if you look at number 2, what would your answer be? A, B, C, or D? A. It's A, right? Just bring the 6 down. That's all you got to do. Right? So those are pretty easy. Not, not that big a deal. All right, let's go to the next one. Question number 3. Now, if you notice, 4 has a, a square root in it. Don't worry, we're going to do one with the square root in it uh, on the odd numbers, just that it's going to be a little bit more involved, more stuff in it. So that's why I wanted to go over that one. But notice this is a division. What, what becomes of a division? Do I add or subtract? I subtract, right? So I'm going to write, uh, let me write the problem first, x over y. This would be log of x minus log of y. And that's it. So again, these aren't like really difficult to do. You just make sure you know your properties. Like keep them next to you as you're doing your work so that you can say, okay, uh, let me look and, and see which one it is. All right, so not too bad. So for number five, I have log of u times v. What do I do with multiplication? How do, when I break them up, what becomes of them? Addition, yeah. So this is going to be log of u plus log of v. Okay, and you see something like number six. I think we have a question like that in one of the odd ones that we're doing right now. Okay, so don't worry. Uh, we'll, we'll get to something similar to number six. Because that one looks a lot more complicated, so... We'll, we'll try to make sure we do that. If number nine doesn't look like that, we'll come back to six. Now check out number seven. All right, so guys, look at number seven. Um, now we have a square root of x squared. Now just to kind of help us out here, I'm going to rewrite it like this. Square root of x squared. But I'm going to put a base two right there. Just so that we remember, a square root has a base 2. If it's a cubed root, it'll have a 3. If it's a fourth root, it'll have a 4. Okay? Now, I'm going to have to rewrite that radical. Okay? Because if you think about it, there were no properties that had square roots in them, right? There was just three properties for logs. The power property, the, uh, the multiplication one, and the division one. That's all we got. Right? 
So let me rewrite this. Now, according to uh, the little uh, definition I gave you guys, the square root of x squared should become x to the 2 over 2. But what's 2 divided by 2? It's 1, so that's just x, right? That's just an x. So this is log of x. And guess what? There's nothing else for me to do. I'm done. Okay? I'm done. Now, if my power, let's, let's just pretend that after I simplified it, I got like an x to the 2 thirds, right? Let's just pretend that's what I got. And I rewrote it, then you're going to get have to get that 2 thirds and throw it to the front. Okay, so if we still would have had a fraction, then move the fraction down. Okay, but our fraction disappeared, so I didn't have to do anything anymore. Okay, but if we would have had a fraction of two thirds, okay, let me write the word if right here, in case you're looking at the notes and wondering how the heck did x become two thirds, right? Uh, x to two thirds, no, it's just if that would have happened, then you get your fraction and move it to the front. Okay, and that would have been it. So let me see number nine. Okay, so number nine is still good. So we're not gonna go back and do number six, we're gonna do number nine. Because this is kind of like number six, just that six was division, this is multiplication. Log of x, y to the third, to the fifth. Now there are two ways that you can do this, but probably the easiest way is just to use the log properties, okay? What does log tell me about this power? What should I do with it? Say again? Yeah, move it to the front, so let's do that. Five log of x, y, q. Okay, so after that, what am I supposed to do with that multiplication on the inside? Separate. Separate them and put a what in between them? Addition. So guys, this is the tricky part. See how the five is out in front? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna separate what, I, what I'm about to do. I'm gonna separate it from that five, okay? So log of x plus log of y cubed. Now, if you look at my answers, none of those seem to look like that. I'm not done yet because look, see I have a power of three right there. I can still bring that to the front of that log. So no, I'm just using the basic properties, that's all. I'm not doing any kind of tricks or anything. There's just the power rule for logs there, so there you go. I moved it to the front. And now that everything has been simplified, you see how there's a five in the front that's multiplying? Let's just distribute it in to get our final answer. This will be five log of x plus 15 log of y. And that's, um, where is that at? That's a. Now I will show you the other way that you could have done this, and maybe you prefer that way. So let me show it to you. I'm gonna put it right here to the side. You could have distributed the power of five into the x, y cube. So it would have looked like this, log of x to the fifth, y to the, what's my power for the y? Uh, it's a, a cubed to the fifth, a power to a power. What do you do when you do a power to a power? Multiply, so three times five, 15. And then you would say, okay, multiplication, let me separate them by adding them. And then let me drop those powers to the front. And notice you get the same answer. Uh, 
Right? There's two ways you could have done this. It's up to you how, how you would prefer it. You could either get that power of five and bring it into the product. That's the blue one. Or you can get the power of five and separate it immediately. That's the red one. Okay? So you can choose which way you prefer. Both of them work just fine. They, they both give you the same answer. There's no difference. You guys have any questions on, on uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9? Again, 9 was probably the toughest one. Um, I think 6 is one of those that's kind of tough. It's not too bad. But it's one of those where you have to decide, should I move the 6 to the front first? Or should I give the 6 to the X and the Y first? Like, what, what should I do? You get, to, you get to choose. Both ways are correct, but you pick which way you think might be easier for you. But most of these are pretty quick. It just requires you to use your property. Once you use the property, you're pretty much done. Okay? So, uh, your homework has already been sent to you guys. Um, you can open up your computer, start doing that. We still have about 25 minutes.